technology of Star Trek Discovery fans. I want to begin this video with shout outs to certain YouTubers I watch about Star Trek Discovery reviews because they line up to my views on Star Trek Discovery. I want to begin my video with that and shout out to NerdRotic, MakerRandom42, Nitpicking Nerd, Anti Tracker, SC Reviews, Egotastic Funtime, those kinds of reviewers. And the reason I shout out to them, because what what unites all of them, what is the commonality between all of them, is that they say that if you like Star Trek Discovery, that's perfectly fine. Tastes cannot be argued. If you like Star Trek Discovery, fine. Like Star Trek Discovery, tastes cannot be argued. If you like it, that's okay. That unites all those reviewers. And... YouTube is always in danger of being oversaturated with much of the same stuff. So unlike those reviewers, I want to take a different approach and say, if you like Star Trek Discovery, you are stupid. You are really stupid. You have no taste and you are really stupid. And the thing that annoys me about Star Trek Discovery fans, if they even exist, and I know they exist because they talk to me, but I don't know what is driving them, how insane they are, what is driving them, is that they try the oldest legal trick in the book that we all know, that everybody knows, that they do that thing of reasonable doubt, the oldest trick in the book that I can tell you 200 reasons why Star Trek Discovery is the worst science fiction TV show ever produced, obviously the worst Star Trek show ever produced and the worst drama show ever produced. I can present you 200 reasons easily. I can list them easily just off the top of my head. But the reasonable doubt idea is that they take your 200 things that you say to them why Star Trek Discovery sucks but they pick apart five of those 200 and then they say oh of those if those five are wrong th then obviously the other 195 can't be trusted either that's that's the oldest legal trick in the book that you say reasonable doubt if five ideas can be t picked apart then the other 195 of your 200 ideas, they can't be trusted either. Because if we can pick five ideas apart, the other 195, they can't hold much water. That's reasonable doubt, obviously. Like, you present 200 reasons, but five of them we can pick apart. How can we trust the other 195? We can pick five of your ideas apart easily. How can you trust the other 195? That's the idea of reasonable doubt. And that's basically how Star Trek Discovery fans, they're not really fans, they're just people trolling. But uh, I'm going to call them Star Trek Discovery fans. We all know it's just people trolling, just people trying to be contrary, and just people trying to get a rise out of people. Nobody likes this show. It's self-evident that everybody who claims to like this show is lying and they just want to be trolling the internet we all know that they know that we know that they are all trolling they are just pretending to like the show to be contrarian to be like old school trolling like something is really terrible Tommy Wiseau is putting out the room and people are saying oh I love the room that's the most bestest movie ever and they're just trolling to get a rise out of people. We all know that self-proclaimed Star Trek Discovery fans are like that. They don't like the show. Nobody likes the show. Nobody likes the show. It's complete crap. We all know it's complete crap. It's in every shape and form complete crap. We all know that. Let's all be honest to ourselves. It's complete crap. We all know that. Nobody likes it. The only reason people pretend to like it is to troll and to get a rise out of people and to say, I'm so contrarian, I'm like, I discovered the internet yesterday and I never heard of trolling before and 
contrarian trolling is the newest thing ever. It's not like people have been doing it for 20 years. We all know nobody likes the show. Nobody. Nobody likes this show. Everybody hates this show. And the people who claim to like it are trolls who want to be contrarian just to get in internet fights because they have nothing else to do. We all know that that's a fact. That's how it is. The show is crap. We all know that. That's how it is. But anyway, to get back to the idea of reasonable doubt and you throw 200 things at them that Star Trek Discovery obviously sucks. Everything about it sucks. Every episode contradicts itself, contradicts the episode before it, contradicts the season before it and contradicts everything else. Nothing makes sense. Everything is just random magic. There's no plot, no story. Everything is just randomly thrown together and there's nothing that in any way holds together. It's just completely retarded nonsense. You can't throw 200 things that some you can throw 2,000 things at them and they pick apart five things and then they feel all great like, oh yeah, I achieved my trolling objective of picking five criticisms apart. Like somebody says, oh, that living planet that is a sphere that collects data that doesn't really make any sense. So they say, yeah, but Q doesn't make any sense either. Yeah, Q doesn't, but that doesn't make it, make it any better. <laughs> that doesn't make it any better. It's like you were saying, um, parts of the Bible don't make sense, but then you say, yeah, parts of the Quran or the Hindu teachings don't make any sense either. That, that doesn't make the Bible any better that other weird religious texts written thousands of years ago don't make, <laughs> make much more sense. That doesn't make it any better. Like here yeah, in TNG and Voyager, obviously they didn't think how Q evolved and where he evolved from. Yeah, that's a plot hole. So if somebody points out the plot hole of what is that sphere on Discovery, you attack it by saying, yeah, there were plot holes in energy beings before. And it doesn't make it any better. Better. It just means we need an origin story for the Q. Yes, we do need that. And it's partly done in the Star Trek novels. But it doesn't make it any better to say, yeah, there were plot holes in Star Trek before, so this plot hole is automatically good. That's not an argument. That's really not an argument. No, no. But that's generally how it goes when you point out the one million plot holes in Star Trek Discovery, then somebody researches what plot holes existed before in Star Trek. And that's really missing the point. It's really missing the point because other Star Trek stories before that, from TOS, the animated series, Next Generation, DS9, Voyager, Enterprise, Besides the plot holes, they also had storylines that perfectly fit together. And Star Trek Discovery doesn't have anything fit together. It has only plot holes. The whole show is just plot holes. Nothing fits together. You want to do the argument that previous shows also had plot holes? Yeah, they did. They had lots of plot holes, especially towards the end when Rick Berman and Brandon Braga were doing Voyager and Enterprise. Lots of plot holes, yeah. Nobody is denying that, especially Enterprise and Voyager, lots of plot holes. But they also had a coherent story <laughs> aside from that. They didn't just have plot holes, they also had a fitting story aside from that. Star Trek Discovery just has plot holes. It's nothing but plot holes, nothing fits together. Even within episodes, and from one episode to the previous episode, and from one episode to an episode earlier in the season, and from one season to the previous season, nothing fits together. None of it makes any sense together. So yeah, if somebody points out Star Trek Discovery plot holes and you say, oh yeah, Voyager had a plot hole in this episode, yeah, you're technically right that Star Trek Voyager had plot holes, but <laughs> it also had a story that didn't have plot holes. But this, the difference that 
in one thing there's a story that has plot holes and in the other thing there's no story that is nothing but plot holes you cannot compare but that's the thing about that whole reasonable doubt idea that yeah you think you if you, I tell you 200 ways Star Trek Discovery is terrible you think that by picking apart five of them you can say that yeah maybe if you can pick apart five of them the other 195 don't have much meaning either it might work in a court when you're trying to defend O.J. Simpson in a murder trial. It might work. It might work in America. In America, it probably will work. But Star Trek is a global brand, which reminds me of the story that um, what I said earlier that Star Trek Discovery is so aimed at North American audiences that it's so bombing on Netflix and Netflix hates ever having paid any cent for it because nobody in Europe is watching it because it's so aimed at North American audiences but I digress I think this is all rooted in all in how toxic the Star Trek Discovery fan base started from in the first place and for that obviously we can easily blame Jason Isaacs in the first place because he was the one who started the trend of insulting Star Trek fans who don't like Star Trek Discovery. He was like, his whole Twitter and all social media accounts were about everyone who likes Star Trek from TOS to Enterprise but doesn't like Discovery must be insulted 24 seven. And that was like the whole identity of Jason Isaacs. And I'm glad they killed him off. And in season two, that's the one thing that improved about Star Trek Discovery, that Jason Isaacs was gone and nobody from the staff was insulting Star Trek fans anymore. That's the one improvement they made. And the other improvement was that when Star Trek Discovery switched from Alex Kurtzman to Michelle Paradise in the middle of season two of Star Trek Discovery, because they have no plan and nothing fits together and nothing will ever make sense. A lot of people switched sides, like you can see on space.com, the Scott Snowden who reviews Star Trek and the Orville and the Expanse and all that. He really switched sides because Scott Snowden on space.com, his reviews of the first half of the second season of Star Trek Discovery, very enthusiastic, very chill, very positive. And then towards the second half of the season, he was like, why did I just watch this? There was just so much unnecessary stuff. What a waste of time. And he says that about every episode in the second half of the season. And it's pretty much when Michelle Paradise took over from Alex Kurtzman. That he was just, okay, I was with you with the first half of the season. But why is all this shit now happening? What a shitty show this has become. And you can tell the frustration in every word. Or... Max Zikri, Mr. Sci-Fi, Max Zikri from Space Command. You know, you can see him on YouTube. Please, please subscribe Mr. Sci-Fi on YouTube. People from Midnight's Edge or uh, Mega Random 42 or Nerd Radio, they never tell you to subscribe to Mr. Sci-Fi, but please subscribe to Mr. Sci-Fi. He has some of the best views of this show you can imagine because he tries, he wants the show to be good and you can hear the frustration in his voice with just how bad it is he re he's one of the persons who he really wants this show to be good and you can hear the frustration in his, in his voice and see it in his body language that it isn't please subscribe to mr sci-fi i really admire mark zikri he wrote one of the best ds9 episodes one of the best Babylon five episodes and i've never seen space command yet because i want I want him to have a few episodes produced so I can kind of spend a whole day watching a couple of episodes. That's why I'm waiting to see Space Command. But uh, with his writing talent, I'm sure it's good. Anyway, I was talking about the whole toxic shit that Jason Isaac started. And it's that way that um, when Enterprise came out, I really liked 
Enterprise. I really liked Enterprise. I've been a fan of Enterprise, of Star Trek Enterprise, since the first episode. And I liked the whole show. But a lot of people hated it. But I never went around on... I've seen a lot of critical reviews of it. I've seen a lot of complaints about it. I've seen a lot of people really shitting on Star Trek Enterprise back in the day. And I never went around to their places insulting them, telling them to kill themselves and uh, telling them what shitty persons they are. It's just that I liked the show, they hated it, but I just said, give it a chance, it's a good show. And in turn, I could not stand Star Trek Voyager. I hated Star Trek Voyager. I rewatched it since then and I've come to appreciate it a bit more. And it's actually not a bad show, but back then I hated Voyager, but a lot of people really loved it, but I hated it. But the people who really loved it, I talked to them and they never came to my place and said, uh, I should kill myself or I'm a shitty person or I'm a racist or sexist for not liking Voyager. There was never that toxic idea between Star Trek fans that if you don't like one Star Trek show, then you're a sexist and racist and you should kill yourself and you're a sick person and whatever. There was never that toxic element to it. Star Trek Discovery was the first that had that toxic element to it, that if you don't like the show, you're a sexist, racist, you should kill yourself and I hope you die in an accident and um, it's all that shit I hear again and again, these insults and death death wishes and death threats and accusations of bigotry and it's never been there before even back then when people liked DS9 and hated Voyager or liked Voyager and hated DS9 or when people liked Enterprise hated Enterprise it's never been that toxic it's never been that way and they started that way when Obviously, Jason Isaac started that when he started insulting everyone and accusing everyone of being the worst KKK supporters for liking TOS and TNG but not liking Discovery. Obviously, people who uh, like TOS and TNG and don't like Discovery, they're all in the Ku Klux Klan, obviously. They're all waiting to go back in time and vote for Hitler, obviously. Like, we saw we loved Uhura and Jordi and everyone, but uh, because we don't like Discovery, we want to go back in time and vote for Hitler. And we also are members of the Ku Klux Klan, obviously. And then that's the Jason Isaacs kind of weird shit that he started. He's like a really demented person. He, <clears throat> he has such serious issues in his brain. I don't know how he functions at all. I don't know how he is able to tie his shoes with that retardedness that he has in his brain. It's like the worst person on the planet. Seriously, I hate that guy. I hate everything about that shitty attitude about him. And it's that whole toxic shit that started since then that culminated in that reasonable doubt shit that I already mentioned that People were feeling like they were standing against a wall and there's these five Star Trek Discovery fans who are enlightened and see the greatness of the show but they are obviously just trolling to be contrarian and against them are a million KKK members who just up your hatred and so they need to <laughs> pick apart some random criticisms and feel all great about it and feel their trolling agenda achieved by picking apart five criticisms out of a thousand that you can get by now. Like, <clears throat> to return to my earlier shout outs, watch the videos by Nitpicking Nerd about how he mentions every single plot hole in the show. And it's easily a thousand. It's easily a thousand and then the whole reasonable doubt thing comes in and they the star trek discovery fans in quotes the trolls who want to be contrarian and pretend to like it they 
pick apart five of them and then pull that reasonable doubt routine that if we can pull apart five of your criticisms, then the other 1,995 obviously don't matter either. And no, you're wrong. This show is shit. Star Trek Discovery is shit. Everything about it is shit. Everything about it is shit. Every episode is shit. Every scene is shit. Every idea is shit. Every line of dialogue is shit. Everything about it is shit. There's nothing good about it. Everything about this show is shit. It's the worst television aside from soap opera that ever aired. It's complete shit. It's objective, undeniable, undeniable, factual shit. It's complete garbage. It's crap. It's nonsense. It's bullshit. It sucks. It's how it is. It's objectively so. There's. N it's not a matter of opinion. It's not a matter of taste. It's shit. It's garbage. It's not a taste thing. It's not a matter of liking or disliking. It's garbage. It's shit. It's like Battlefield Earth meets the room, except both put together and a hundred times worse. It's garbage. It's complete garbage. It's shit. It's how it is. And the people who pretend to like it, you're really, really pathetic trolls who are trying to buy into the oldest idea of trolling. Like, I first got the internet in 1998 and Back then it was funny to pretend to be contrarian and pretend to like something that is shit to get a rise also out of people. Back then it was funny and the whole early 2000s it was funny to pretend to like something that is shit just to get a rise out of people just to troll. But that was decades ago by now. It's no longer funny, it's old school outdated trolling. That's not how you... If you want to be a troll, if you want to be an internet troll, don't do that anymore. It's so outdated. It's so outdated. It's beginner's trolling. It's trolling 101. It's trolling for dummies. I, it's, I can't believe it's not trolling. It's trolling light. It's, it's dad trolling. It's your mom trolling. It's really, really pathetic, outdated early 2000s trolling that you pretend to be contrarian just to get a rise out of people. Come on, the rest of us was over it 20 years ago when we first discovered the internet. And you just discover it now because you're 16 years old? Wow. I'm sorry, we all did that already 20 years ago. Like, try to come up with something new. It's pathetic. Don't steal our old ideas of trolling. That's how we were trolling back then, like pretending to like something that's complete crap, that's complete garbage, complete shit, that's early 2000s trolling. Sorry, you're late. You're just late. You can't really impress us with that. Sorry.